Hey everybody, it's Rob Cherry City Guns and Ammo, and today we're taking a look at my newest acquisition. This is a Palmetto State Jackal, chambered in 5.56. Stick around. All right, yes, once again, Palmetto State Jackal, chambered in 5.56. Obviously this is an FDE, and I have added a BCM uh, uh, hand stop. I had to think about what that was called for a minute there. And we've got a SIG uh, Tango MSR uh, 1-6 LVPO. Um, I did, this is the JMAC folding stock that it does come with. It's one of the many options they have. And I added the JMAC uh, cheek riser. Now, before we get too much into this, I'm gonna mention the bad. I kinda wish I hadn't have got this stock. I wish I would've gotten the other stock, the scar kinda looking stock. Um, only reason is, this has very short length of pull, although I'm learning to deal with it. Um, I grew up shooting hunting rifles, and hunting rifles, you're always shoulder pocket, right? That's where you get there. Well, shoulder pocket, I'm like, it's way too close. But I do realize that that is not the way, that is not the optimal way to shoot an AR type rifle. Bring it in close, roll the, the shoulder forward. And when I do that, I'm actually really good. It's just fine for that. I just have to get used to this new way of shooting, which I should do anyway. Um, I'm six foot two. And so, if, I mean, unless you're a real freak, um, you should be able to make that work for you. I just kind of wish I had a little more uh, adjustability that you get with that other type stock. But maybe this is something you'd be interested in. Maybe it'd be great like if you're doing a short little 300 blackout build. Anyway, enough of the negative. Let's get on with the actual shooting to this. What I am shooting is um, just some inexpensive Fiocchi 55 grain. Uh, it's a good training ammo. And I've got my Sinusco Hybrid 46M on the front. The reason I got this is, you know, it's very AR-ish, but it's not in AR where it really counts. And that is when you run a, want to run subsonic, uh, not subsonic, sorry, when you want to run suppressed, uh, the old saying with ARs is they shit where they eat. And that's because of the direct impingement system where it's blowing gas back into your action to cycle it. This is almost kind of like the uh, bastard child of an AR and an AK because it is a piston driven design you're not blowing all that extra gas back in there. You're not getting a bunch of gas in the face. Um, and what's really cool is your gas is adjustable without any tools. It's all right there. So that's really cool. And I will show you how to take it down. And you'll kind of see how it operates here in a little bit. Let's just do some uh, plinking with this thing. Let's, let's go out there to 60 yards, shoot the 60 yard silhouette. And I'll tell you, this thing, it like doesn't recoil at all. I'm actually gonna change the angle of the camera so you see more of me and less of the target so you can see how this thing really reacts. Let's go out there to 100 yards. See if we can hit our 100 yard head. There you go. Not bad. Still got a few rounds left. Let's hit that head some more. That's fun. Well, I'll tell you, it runs really, really smooth. Um, I definitely do like that. And it seems to run very well suppressed. 
I'm getting very little gas in the face. Granted, this is a 45 cal suppressor I have on there. I have a 30 cal end cap, so it gives a little bit more of that flow through design. Um, it maybe would give you more gas if you run an actual 5.56 suppressor, but I don't, honestly, I don't know what I would, why I would. Um, this really takes all the, the biggest blasts forward. You're never going to get really quiet with a 5.56 because you're going to have a really loud supersonic crack. So this really just helps mitigate some of the sound a little bit. Um, but this gives it a little extra flow through that a 5.56 can uh, maybe wouldn't. And between that and the way this operates, I'm getting like no gas in the face. So it's very comfortable shoot suppressed. That being said, this is a very uh, kind of unbalanced gun. It's got a lot of forward weight and then a heavy can on the front of it. Between those two things, by the end, I guarantee most of those misses were because just fatigue, honestly. Hold it up for that long. Um, I was starting to ugh, struggle with it a little bit because it is very forward heavy. But I'm going to load up with some different ammo. I've got some targets out there at 100 yards. We're going to see how this shoots at 100. We'll be right back. All right, so we're, uh, we're going to do a little bench rest test here. Uh, what we got loaded up first is some of this Fiocchi Range Dynamics. Uh, it's technically not a 5.56 ammo, it's 2.23, 55 grain full metal jacket boat tail. It's right at 3,240 feet per second. Uh, this is what I'm sighted in with, although I sighted in without a suppressor. Um, so we might not hit exactly on, uh, but we're not really concerned about where it's hitting. What I'm really wanting to look at is, is group size. Uh, this is a one to four power optic, just so you're aware. I'm sorry, one to six power optic. Um, all right. So we should have a nice little picture in picture here. We got our scope camera going. So we are going to shoot for the center bullseye on the left target. Um, you can see there's a little nick right on the bullseye. That's not a shot. That's just a little nick in the paint. This is one of these painted splatter targets. Let's see what kind of groups this produces. And I'm going to take off my glasses for this. Five rounds. Looks like looking through our camera, it looks like a pretty decent group. And I'll take pictures of them up close so you can see better. Um, but it looks like a pretty decent group. Sorry, it's a little fuzzy. This isn't the best setup. Maybe that's a little. We'll definitely get a better picture of it up close. Now we're going to try some classic old Winchester white box. This is actually 5.56. It says 5.56, but it's actually rated at a lower feet per second. It's rated at 3180. I'm going to load up five rounds of this and see how it shoots. A lot of people do three round groups. I like five round groups. I feel like it gives you a little more info to go on here. Oh. One chest white box. And those all grouped a little bit low. So let's go up to the top right bullseye of the same target.
So those were low too, but those were a little bit on the right, it looks like. That's kind of interesting. But I actually think the uh, Fioki grouped a little bit better. We'll do some we'll do some more tests. Now we're shooting some Hornady Black. This is some 62 grain full metal jacket. And supposedly these are coming out 3,100 feet per second. So just a little bit slower, but a heavier bullet. They should probably hit a little bit higher. It's typically your heavier bullets will hit a little bit higher. We will find out here. I'm expecting this will group best. I think these will group high. Let's go to the left middle bullseye of the same target. So directly to the left of the first bullseye that we shot. doesn't look too terrible. Again, we'll look at these up close. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give this a few minutes to cool because I guarantee it is hotter than Hades. We're going to pull the suppressor and we're going to shoot the same groups again on a different target without the suppressor and see what kind of difference it makes. Uh, we'll be back with you in a few minutes with these cool. All right, I went ahead and walked up here while we're waiting for my can to cool. So here's our five round group of the Fioki 55 grain range dynamics and we got like a two and a half inch group which isn't too shocking but again it's a six power and the uh it's not a crosshair it's a center dot and it's actually kind of hard to see these and we went to our um the 55 grain winchester white box one two three four then five it actually was a little bit smaller group and since it seems like this group tends left, uh, when we shoot it without the suppressor, maybe we'll, we'll move over a touch. And then last is our 62 grain Hornady Black. We got three that are basically touching. I felt one that definitely felt like a flyer to me. I don't know which one. I want to save that one. I feel like I pulled that, but that seems pretty darn good. So let's go see if our suppressor's cool. Move over to this target. Looks like we got a little bit of splatter that came off from one of our shots up here. But uh, we can tell those aren't bullet holes. All right, be right back. Here you go. All right, we've got suppressor off. We're back to the 55 grain uh, range dynamics by Fioki. We're going to the, uh, the target on the right. And we're going to center bullseye. I've got, got this uh, scope cam going. Let's see We'll have to look up there in, in person, but honestly, that looks like that might be a better um, grouping than with, with the suppressor. So now let's load up this uh, Winchester white box. Um, 
M193, 55 grain. Let's see how this shoots. And this seemed like this tended to be a little bit right. So we're going to shoot on the left, top left. We're going to go to the top left corner on that same target. We'll see how that does. I'll have to go look in person, but that actually looks like that might be a worse grouping than the first time around. So now we're going to the 62 grain Hornady, Hornady Black. And this stuff on the old target just went... No, it was pretty close to being on target. So we'll just go, we'll drop down exactly one bullseye. So we'll go to the center left bullseye on that right target. I can't tell what those did. Um, but I'll just go ahead, and, you know, go ahead and do my outro now, and then we'll walk up there and take a look at those in person. Um, All right, here. So somebody screwed up by shooting at the target that was not supposed to shoot the target before I got out here and got video. But here was our, our group with the 55 grain range dynamics. There's a couple extras that were from another shooter. Actually seems to shoot better, unsuppressed. This was our the Winchester white box. One, two, three, a couple of these. That really seemed to open up quite a bit. And then up here was our 62 grain Horde Black. We had one go way out, which is kind of weird. But um yeah, I know. I think it depends on which ammo you're shooting, but it almost seems to shoot better unsuppressed. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Appreciate you coming back week after week. We're going to do some more shooting with this uh, PSA Jackal. Um, kind of dial it in, see what we we like in it. I'm um, also looking for suggestions on what you would do to build this thing out. Um, set up how, how you would set it up, or would you change some things on it? And what are you, your thoughts on this... Uh, the stock. I, I really feel like I might change the stock out on this. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this, but maybe it just takes some um, getting used to and changing how I how I shoot. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. I try to respond to as many of them as I can. I respond to most of them. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you on the next one. Now we'll go down range and we'll take a look at those targets.